The reason that eye contact feels so difficult is due to uh, the other person. When they're looking at our head, we incorrectly assume that they're looking at our entire body. Whenever someone is facing social anxiety, uh, there's this effect known as the spotlight effect, where we feel as though that there's this imaginary spotlight over our head that's magnifying each of our moves. This is one reason why even when someone's just looking at our eyes, we feel as though our entire body is being watched. Another reason that eye contact feels very difficult is due to the illusion of transparency. Uh, this is when we feel as though our internal nerves are leaking out to the public. You ever had a moment like that where you're talking to someone and you're like, hmm, do I look ugly when I'm speaking? And when you have that thought of, do I look ugly when I'm speaking, then you become more self-conscious and it makes it difficult to hold eye contact with the other person. So the main reason that eye contact feels very difficult is because we feel as though our entire body is being watched. And luckily, we can fix that with a few concepts that we will be discussing in the rest of this class. Eye contact is about looking and taking breaks. This is very important. If you don't understand this simple definition of looking and taking breaks, what's going to happen is that you are going to have the incorrect theory to operate with. When I ask you, what exactly is communication skills? More specifically, what is speaking skills? At first, you may be like, uh, speaking, but that's incorrect. It's speaking plus silence. If you're someone that has the definition that it's just speaking, then you're going to be one of those individuals that vilify silence. And when you vilify silence, you talk a little too fast. And when you talk fast, you don't look uh, confident. And it's the same thing with eye contact. When you're viewing eye contact as just looking at the other person, uh, then you may do eye contact, but you're going to be somewhat creepy. You're just going to be doing this the entire time and it's going to be like, hey, go on, tell me about your day. And you're just looking. You ever had someone do that to you? You couldn't quite tell what the issue was, but something just felt off. You need to incorporate the breaks as well. Eye contact is looking plus taking breaks. And when you think of it like that, there's this level of ease that you feel because if you're watching this class, then chances are you have the breaks part down very good. So you could be like, well, at least I have half of the formula, right? Now I just need to work on the other part of the formula. With this attitude, you are watching the rest of this class with confidence, with a set of um, the attitude of I'm a doer. So once again, eye contact is looking and taking eye breaks. So to ease yourself into eye contact with one-on-one -on -one individuals, what we want to do is we want to avoid uh, glaring at someone or worse, just staring at them, okay? And this is when we incorporate our definition that eye contact includes uh, looking and taking breaks. From there, we want to just get better interaction by interaction. If you're someone that can't even look at someone for let's say two seconds without uh, breaking eye contact, then just challenge yourself to do three seconds. And once you are successful with three seconds, this indicates to the subconscious mind, hey, you're making some improvement. And as you do more interactions, you can begin to go from three seconds to four to five. We're going with the micro approach. In addition to this, another thing that we can do is squint a little. When we squint a little, it does something miraculous. Remember earlier how I was saying that eye contact feels difficult because it feels as though our entire body is being watched? Well, when we do this gentle squint, not only do we look as though we're paying attention to the other person, for some reason, uh, this also deactivates the spotlight effect. It feels as though that the spotlight is dimming and there's not that much awareness on our body. 
This helps us uh, go from the three second mark to the four second mark as we are working on our eye contact. And if you just want to keep the flow going a little bit more, a smirk never hurts. A smirk to a smile, depending on the context, will put you at a state of uh, comfort. Uh, because whenever you're smiling, you're releasing endorphins in your brain, aka the feel-good chemicals. So a quick little recap. Uh, you just want to focus on the micro approaches. Uh, just keep getting better interaction by interaction. Uh, from there, uh, help yourself uh, get better in the interactions by doing a gentle little squint and smirking uh, to uh, feel more comfortable. Not all conversations are always going to be one-on-one. -on -one. Plenty of times, it's going to be scaled interactions. Let's say it's a group uh, conversation or it's a public speaking event. For group conversations and for public speaking events, uh, we don't just want to scan, right? We want to lock and hold. I learned about this when I used to be in a public speaking club and one of the first times that I was trying to give a speech, I was like, I gotta look at all of these uh, folks. Uh, so I'm over here trying to give the speech. And as I'm trying to give the speech, I'm like, did I look at this person? Did I look at that person? What about that person? And I'm over here just giving myself a headache. Well, one day uh, I was able to learn from past members that you don't have to look at all the people uh, in the audience. Actually, as a beginner, what you want to do is you want to segment the audience into three left, middle, and right. And then you just choose one um, member from each of those sections, preferably the most engaged members, and you just talk to them. And I was like, you can't do that. What about all the other people in the audience? They're going to get offended. And that's when these folks said, when there's a distance between you and the audience, uh, due to the way that our eyes are structured, others can't quite tell who you're exactly looking at. Just look at the um, person that you chose, those top three engaged members, and the people around them will think that you're also looking at them. I tried this out one day. I went back into the public speaking club, I gave a speech, and I recall I was uh, looking at this lady named Sue. But after the event, there was a guy named Jeffrey, one of the older uh, gentlemen, and he's like, I saw you looking at me when you made that point but I was never looking at Jeffrey. I was just looking at Sue, but Jeffrey was by Sue. This goes on to show that lock and hold is way more powerful because you feel better and it makes the other people around the people that you chose feel as though that you're speaking to them. Now in group uh, interactions, if it's just two to three people, you don't really need to like select the members and stuff. That's more so for high scaled events. Uh, for uh, the smaller uh, uh, groups, you definitely still want to do lock and hold. And this allows you to actually kill a lot of the social anxiety. Because with social anxiety, a large part of it is because we just think that there's this blob that's judging our moves. When you humanize this blob by looking at one individual at a time, not only do you improve your eye contact, but you melt your social anxiety along the way.